in this video we talk about the transpose of a matrix first let's look at the definition of it a matrix obtained by interchanging the rows and columns of a matrix is called its transpose so to find the transpose of a matrix which is denoted by a and then you put it as t as the power or you say a dash so a t or a dash is the notation for transpose of a matrix and how do you find out the transpose of a matrix when a matrix is given to you you should take each row and write as the corresponding column take the first row and write as the first column so that's why i said uh, the matrix obtained by interchanging the rows and columns of a matrix is called its transpose and that's the notation a transpose so i will take the first row and then make it into the first column take the second row make it into the second column take the third row and make it into the third column like that that's transpose of a matrix we are going to look at an example let a be equal to this matrix 2 3 minus 1 4 5 7 so it has got two rows and three columns so its transpose will have three rows and two columns because i'm going to take each row and there are two rows i'll take both the rows and make them into columns so let's see what is transpose going to be so a yeah, transpose will be i'll take the first row which is two three minus one that's the first row but i'll copy that as the first column 2, 3, minus 1 will be the first column. Then I'll take the second row, 4, 5, 7, and write as the second column. So that is 4, 5, 7, the second column. So that is A, and this is its transpose. So once again, what did we do? We take the first row, which is 2, 3, minus 1, but copy as its column. Take the first row and copy as the first column. Take the second row, and copy as the second column that's called the transpose of a matrix one more example this is called a row matrix because it has got only one row so that's a row matrix so there is only one row and when I try to find out the transpose of this the row will go as the column so B transpose would be the row would appear here as the column there is only one row I take that row and write as the corresponding column so that is transpose of a matrix we have got some properties here the first property is that transpose is distributive over addition and subtraction we just wrote them together a plus or minus b the whole transpose and the transpose is distributive over addition so you can put them separately for a and b so a plus b the whole transpose will be equal to a transpose plus or minus b transpose so transpose is distributive over addition and subtraction now we look at multiplication but there it's not distributive so a b the whole transpose it's not distributive it's it, it has got a special rule we, we we will verify a few questions and see whether this result is actually true at the moment i'm going to accept this result a b the whole transpose is going to be b transpose into a transpose it doesn't get distributed if it was just distributive it would have been a transpose into b transpose but that's not the case a into b the whole transpose turns out to be b transpose into a transpose so the second matrix appears first p into q the whole transpose would be q transpose into p transpose it reverses the order so a into b the whole transpose is b transpose times a transpose that's a very important result and uh, finally a transpose the whole transpose i take the transpose and then again transpose what does that mean take all the rows and make in the columns when i take the transpose and if i take transpose one more time these columns will go back to rows which means a transpose the whole transpose two times when i take transpose it gets back to the original A, nothing happens to it. So A transpose, the whole transpose is A. So the three properties, quickly what we learned in this section. First is what is transpose? 
I should take each row and write as the corresponding column. Take the first row and write as the first column. Take the second row and write as the second column. That's transpose of a matrix. Now, what are the properties? Transpose is distributive over addition and subtraction. A plus B, the whole transpose, will be A transpose plus B transpose and also for subtraction. Now, multiplication, it's not distributive. We have a special rule. A, B, the whole transpose would be B transpose times A transpose. And the final property, if you take transpose two times, A transpose, the whole transpose would be A itself. I have a verification question here. There is a matrix A given to you and a matrix B given to you. And the question is to verify the one of the properties we had there. A, B, the whole transpose is equal to B transpose into A transpose. And to verify this, I should do the left-hand side and then I should do the right-hand side and show that both are equal. But to do the left-hand side, A, B, the whole transpose, I can't do that straight away. I do it in stages. First, I will only do A, B. Multiply the two matrices, get A, B, and then take its transpose to get the left-hand side. I'm going to just find out what is A into B. I copy my A, a matrix and B matrix. Matrix A is copied here, followed by matrix B. But now I'm going to check on its order. What's the order of the first matrix? There is first row here, horizontally when I count, two, two steps are there, horizontally. That's the first row and this is the second row. So there are two rows and there are three columns. So that's a two by three matrix here. How about the second matrix B? Horizontally one, two, and three. Three steps horizontally. One, two, and three. And vertically, one and two, two vertically. So I'm going to write that order here separately. The first one is two rows and three columns. Second one is three rows horizontally when I count one, two, and three. Three rows and vertically two, three by two matrix. And we know that for multiplication to be possible, the middle numbers must be the same. So the answer will be a two by two matrix. That's the answer going to be. So I'm going to perform that multiplication. So I keep that arrow mark, like the first row goes along the first column. That's how you do matrix multiplication. So multiplication will be the first row gets multiplied with the first column. First row goes along the first column. So two into one is two plus one into zero is zero plus three into five is 15. That's first row, first column element. Now take the second, first row itself. I do the first row with the first column. Now first row with the second column to get the next element. So the first row goes along the second column. So 2 into minus 1 will be minus 2. 1 into 2 will be 2. And 3 into 0 will be 0. So first row into the first column to get this element. First row into the second column to get this element. I repeat the same thing with the second row, 4, 1, 0. So 4, 1, 0, second row with the first column. Second row with the first column. So 4 into 1 is 4, plus 1 into 0 is 0, plus 0 into 5 is 0. Now second row with the third column. 4 into minus 1 will be minus 4, then 1 into 2 is 2, and 0 into 0 is 0. Let's simplify that. That gives me 17, 0, 4 minus 2. So I have A, B done. But my left hand side is not A, B. It's A, B the whole transpose. So I'm going to do the LHS of what I have to verify, which is A, B the whole transpose. And how do I find out the transpose of this? I read the first row, which is 17, 0, will go as the first column. So that's going to be 17, 0, the first column. And 4 minus 2, the second row, will go as the second column, which is your LHS. We're going to start with the RHS and the RHS is B transpose into A transpose. I copy RHS and say this is B transpose A transpose. What is B transpose? I go to my B, read each row and write as the column. 1 minus 1, the first row will appear here as the first column. Then 0 to the second row will appear as the second column. 5, 0, the third row will appear as the third column. So that's my B transpose. The first row, 1 minus 1, goes as the first column. The second row, 0, 2, goes as the second column. 
and 5 0 the third row goes as the third column that's my b transpose into a transpose now what is a transpose i look at my a read the first row 2 1 3 but copy as the first column read the first row write as the first column read the second row 4 1 0 write as the second column now matrix multiplication i need to check the order but then this, this is exactly same as what i did before so the order I already know, 2 by 3 into 3 by 2 gives me a 2 by 2 matrix. So this is going to give me a 2 by 2 matrix. Let's multiply first. We keep the arrow mark. So I have the arrow mark kept and I am going to multiply. The first row goes with the first column. 1 into 2 is 2 plus 0 into 1 is 0 plus 5 into 3 is 15. That's first row with the first column. Now first row with the second column. 1 into 4 is 4, plus 0 into 1 is 0, plus 5 into 0 is 0. So first row into the first column, and first row into the second column. Now the second row. Minus 1, 2, 0 into the first column. Second row into the first column. Minus 1 into 2 is minus 2. 2 into 1 is 2, plus 0 into 3 is 0. And, the fi and final element, second row with the second column. Minus 1 into 4 is minus 4, 2 into 1 is 2, plus 0 into 0 is 0. Add it up, and then we see that that's exactly the same as what I have on the left side. So LHS equals RHS. AB, the whole transpose, is equal to B transpose into A transpose, and is verified. We are going to look at one more question like that. If A is equal to this column matrix, it's a column matrix. It's called a column matrix because there is only one column. And this is a row matrix. So there is an A matrix and a B matrix. And the question is to prove that or verify that AB the whole transpose is going to be B transpose into A transpose. I'm going to first find out AB so that I can work out my LHS later. So first I need A into B. Then only I can take its transpose to get the LHS. So AB. So I'll copy my A matrix followed by B matrix. Never start multiplying without checking the order, especially in this case, you will realize that if you don't check the order before you start multiplying, you can get confused. What's the order of the first matrix? Horizontally, how many steps? Always count horizontally. One, horizontally, second step, and then third step. There are three steps. So horizontally, three, and vertically, there is only one. There is only one column. So there are three horizontally, horizontal steps like that and then second step and the third step so it's a three by one matrix three rows and only one column so three by one matrix multiplied by the second matrix b is has only one horizontal step one by but there are three columns vertically one by three matrix so the middle numbers are same so they get cancelled so the answer is going to be three by three by three okay that's what is very important here these two small vectors or rather thin vectors when you multiply my answer is going to be pretty big it's a three by three matrix is what i'm going to get so this idea you need to get and that's possible only if you check the order so make sure that you always write the order first so i'm going to multiply the first row with the first column oh yeah that looks nice look first row with the first column minus two with the first column the first row has only one element and the first column has only one element so it's going to be minus 2 into 1, just minus 2. The first element is just minus 2. Then minus 2 into the second column, which is minus 6. Then minus 2 into the third column, which is minus 6 into minus 2 is plus 12. So once again, first row into the first column, minus 2 into 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 into 3 is minus 6. Minus 2 into minus 6 is plus 12. Now I repeat the same thing with the second row. 4 into 1 will be 4, then 4 into 3 will be 12, then 4 into minus 6 will be minus 24. So I have 4, the second row into the first column, 4, second row into the second column, 12, second row into the third column, minus 24. And finally, the third element, the third row, third row, third row is only 5, third row into the first column, 5 into 1 is 5, third row into the second column, 15, and third row into the third column which is minus 30 so that's my a b and so now i'll do the lhs which is a b d whole transpose and that's very easy i just read each row but copy as the corresponding column i read my first row minus 2 minus 6 12 
but I copy it as minus 2 minus 6 12 the first column I read the first row but write as the first column then I read the second row 4 12 minus 24 but copy as the second column and finally the third row I cop read 5 15 minus 30 and copy as the third column which is the LHS so my LHS is over now I'm going to do the RHS and for RHS it is B transpose into A transpose. What is B transpose? B is 1, 3, minus 6 a row. So its transpose will be a column. The row of B appears as column in B transpose. Into A transpose. A is a column. So when I take transpose it will appear as a row. Think like that. Rows and columns are interchanged. So A has only one column which will appear as one row here. The column appears as row here. That's my A transpose. Now the multiplication looks similar to what I did earlier. It's a 3 by 1 matrix into 1 by 3 matrix. So the answer has to be a 3 by 3 matrix. So let's multiply. The first row with the first column. But it's only one element. The first row has only one element. First column has only one element. So first row into the first column, 1 into minus 2 is minus 2. First row into the second column, 1 into 4 is 4. And first row into the third column, which is 5. Now second row, 3. The second row into the first column, 3 into minus 2, minus 6. 3 into 4, 12. And 3 into 5, 15. That's 15 there. Now I have my third row going with this second matrix so the third row with the first column third row with the first column that will be 12 then third row with the second column minus 6 into 4 is minus 24 and third row with the third column which is going to be negative 30 so that's my RHS and I need to check and see whether the LHS and RHS came the same. And you can compare them and see they are actually the same. So LHS equals RHS. We verified the result. I have another two definitions now. One is symmetric matrix. Now this term is associated only with a square matrix. It's a very special kind of a matrix. So this is the definition. A square matrix A is said to be symmetric only if A transpose is same as A. So what is A transpose? I take each row and write as the corresponding column. But when I do that, if nothing happens to the matrix, if A transpose remains the same as A itself, then it's called a symmetric matrix. A square matrix A is said to be symmetric if A transpose is same as A. You take transpose, you interchange the rows and columns, you take each row and write as the col corresponding column, nothing happens to matrix. The matrix still looks the same. Now, how do we write an example? There is a, it's a pattern in which you follow here. Like, if I want to write a 3 by 3 symmetric matrix, if I ever want to write an example, the diagonal elements A11, A22, A33, you, you have the freedom to keep anything there. Because when you take the transpose, those three elements won't change its positions. That's why they can be anything. The remaining elements, like if I keep an element here, whatever I keep here, I should have the same element on its opposite side, diagonally opposite. So all the diagonally opposite elements should be same. For example, I kept minus 2 here. So here, A, this is A12, so A21 should be minus 2 as well. Because A12 will go to A21 and A21 will go to A12. So they have to be the same element so that when I take transpose, it looks the same. I kept a 6 there, so that is A13, so A31 should also be 6, diagonally opposite. I kept 1 there, diagonally opposite is 1. Now if I try to take the transpose of A, I'm writing, e, I'm reading each row, Actually, you need to see what I did. I read the first row and write as the first column. I read the second row and I write as the second column. I read the third row and write as the third column. Once I finish it, 
I realize that it looks as if I haven't done anything. It looks exactly same as your original A. And that's why we call it as a symmetric matrix. We have one more definition. This is called skew symmetric. And what is a skew symmetric matrix? It's again a square matrix. And it is said to be a skew symmetric matrix only if A transpose is same as negative A. So we'll call a matrix A as skew symmetric if A transpose is same as negative A. Now in a skew symmetric, the diagonal elements will always be zero because when you take transpose, the diagonal elements will stay there. So if I have to get negative of the original, that's only for zero. You can read it as positive also. You can read it as negative also as you wish. So the diagonal elements, all of them will be zero. So if I want to write an example, the first thing is keep the diagonal elements all zeros. Now any element I keep, like for example, if I have a A12, the first row, second column element, if A12 is 5, A21 will be negative 5 because when I interchange them, it should become negative of the original number. So the numbers are kept with opposite signs. So I keep 2 there, diagonally opposite will be minus 2. I keep minus 3 there, diagonally opposite will be 3. I keep 1 there, diagonally opposite will be minus 1. Now if I find out a transpose, I read each row. I read the first row and copy as the first column. I read the second row, minus 2, 0, 1 and copy as the second column. I read the third row, 3, minus 1, 0 and copy as the third column. And you can see that this is not exactly, say, I'm sorry, this is my A. This is not exactly same as my original A. Uh, I can see that 2 appears here as minus 2. Minus 3 appears in the same position here as positive 3. Negative 2 appears as positive 2. 0 is 0 itself or I could say minus 0. 1 appears as minus 1. 3 appears as minus 3. Minus 1 appears as positive 1. And 0 appears as negative 0. So all these elements became negative of the previous one, original one. So can't I say that it is negative A? So A transpose turned out to be negative of the original matrix and therefore A is said to be skew symmetric. So the two basic results here, if A transpose remains the same as A, it's called a symmetric and if A transpose turns out to be negative of the original A, it's called a skew, skew symmetric. And we have got few questions based on it. Uh, first, a general question, a kind of proof theory it is. Express a square matrix as the sum of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix. They didn't tell which matrix it is. So I'm going to choose a general matrix. I'll select A, B, a general square matrix of order N. And I want to prove that this A can be split as a matrix B plus C, where B should be symmetric and C should be skew symmetric. And they, what they are saying is that you can do this for every square matrix. So I'm going to assume a general square matrix. I'll say let A be a square matrix of order N. Let A be a square matrix of order N. What I'm going to do is I'm going to consider a new matrix. I'll say consider the matrix B, which is made in this format. Like you have the matrix A, for every matrix A you can find its transpose and since it's a square matrix addition will still be the still be possible so i have for the correspond for the matrix a i will find out a transpose then add them up so a is the given matrix find what is a transpose and add them up a plus a transpose and keep a half outside divide each element by 2 that's the meaning of it so i'm considering a new matrix which i created as and i name it as b of course B is equal to half of A plus A transpose. This is something which we have created. But uh, what is special about this matrix is that I can easily prove that this matrix B is going to be symmetric. And how do I prove that any matrix for that matter as symmetric? Take its transpose and see if it is going to be the same as B itself. So what is B transpose? B transpose means take transpose of this half of a plus a transpose 
the whole transpose. Nothing happens to half, it's a number, so that stays there. So it's just A plus A transpose, the whole transpose. And we learned as the first property that transpose is distributive over addition. So what does that become? Half of A gets transpose plus transpose of A transpose. So A transpose plus A transpose the whole transpose. But I know that A transpose the whole transpose will be A itself. So half of A transpose, the first matrix remains the same, but A transpose the whole transpose becomes A. Now look at this. Isn't it actually your B itself? Yes, it is B. So when I took B transpose, it remains the same as B, and therefore B is Q symmetric. So in that case, now I'm going to create another matrix C. I'll say now consider matrix C in the form half of A minus A transpose. So this is something which we are creating again. So we created a new matrix now and name it as C. And what I'm going to do now is that I will prove that the C is not just any random matrix. It is always going to be skew symmetric. Now how do I prove that any matrix for that matter as skew symmetric? Find its transpose. And when I find its transpose, if the answer is the same, sorry, when I find its transpose, if it is going to be negative of the same matrix, if A transpose is equal to negative A, that's when it is called a skew symmetric. So if I want to prove that C is skew symmetric, C transpose has to be negative C. Let's see. C transpose is transpose of this. Doesn't affect half. So I write A minus A transpose, the whole transpose, and the transpose gets distributed in. And when I take the transpose in, A will become A transpose. And what is transpose of A transpose? I'm distributing the transpose inside. So A transpose, the whole transpose is A. So I directly wrote, after distributing, a transpose goes on top of A, which is A transpose. And transpose goes here, which makes it transpose of A transpose, which is A. Is it same as my C? Oh, no, no, no. There is a small difference between the two. That was A minus A transpose. This is A transpose minus A. So which means I should take A minus A and out. And if I take A minus A and out, A transpose minus A will now become A minus A transpose because I put A minus A and outside. So with the minus A and outside, I have my C back here. So it's going to be minus C. And if it is minus C, what do I say about C? Therefore, C is skew symmetric. Now, what if I add B and C together? B plus C, if I add, B is half of A plus A transpose, and C is half of A minus A transpose. Wouldn't, if I take half common out, wouldn't minus A transpose and plus A transpose cancel? So this minus A transpose and plus A transpose will cancel. So I have half of 2A, which is A. So we have proved that every square matrix A can be written as B plus C, where B is already proved as symmetric and C is proved as skew symmetric. So every given square matrix can be expressed as the sum of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix. So we are going to do a numerical question on it express the following as the sum of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix. We follow the exactly the same method. So I have a question here, a matrix A given to me. What I'm going to do is first thing is, that's my question. And I'm asked to write this matrix as the sum of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix. What I'll do first is I'll find out what is A transpose. What is A transpose? Read the first row and write as the first column. 5, 2, minus 3, write as the first column. Second row, 4, minus 3, 5, write as the second column. Third row, 0, 2, 1, write as the third column. So I have got A from my question, and I found A transpose. And I'm going to create a matrix called B. I'll say consider the matrix B. And what is B? Half of A plus A transpose. I won't show too many steps for that. What I do is I'll keep half outside. Then I look at my A and A transpose and simply add them up, add the corresponding elements. So what is it going to be? Half into add the corresponding elements. 
a11 from here plus a11 from there. So 5 plus 5, 10. 2 plus 4, 6. Minus 3 plus 0, minus 3. First row is over. 4 plus 2, 6. Minus 3 plus minus 3, minus 6. And 5 plus 2 is 7. 0 plus minus 3 is minus 3. 2 plus 5 is 7. And 1 plus 1 is 1 plus 1 is 2 here. So that's my B. But what I need to do is I can't leave my B like that. I need to always show that what I got now or rather what I found now is not just any random matrix. It's a symmetric one. I can see for myself but I need to prove it. So I'm going to say now consider B transpose which is half of half stays. I read each row and write as the column. I read the first row 10, 6, minus 3 and copy as the first column. The second row 6, minus 6, 7, copy as the second column. The third row minus 3, 7, 2, but write as the third column. And when I finish writing that, it looks as if I haven't done anything, which means this is same as your B. So B transpose turned out to be B itself, therefore B is symmetric. Now I say consider the matrix C half of A minus A transpose, which is half of, that's easy again, I have my A and A transpose there, I'm not going to copy them. I look at the two matrices and subtract. So A minus A transpose, so 5 minus 5, 0, 2 minus 4, minus 2, minus 3, minus 0, minus 3. Next row, 4 minus 2, 2, minus 3, minus, minus 3, minus 3 plus 3 is 0. 5 minus 2 is 3. Now third row. 0 minus minus 3 is 3. 2 minus 5 is minus 3. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I have my C ready with me. But I can't just leave it like that. I, what my aim is to show that this is not just any random matrix, but it is Q symmetric. So I'm going to find what is C transpose. Half of. I read my first row from the... 0 minus 2, 3 is my first row, becomes the first column. I write as the first column. Now I'll read the second row, 2, 0, 3, and write as the second column. I read the third row, 3 minus 3, 0, but write as the third column. And then I see that this is not exactly same as my C. It's going to be negative C. You can see that every element has got a sign change. 0 remains negative 0. I could say if I want, 0 is 0. Minus 2 became 2, minus 3 became 3, that in C it was 2, in C transpose it is minus 2, 0, in C it was 3, in C transpose it became minus 3. So every element became negative of the original. So isn't it negative of the original matrix there? I took a minus n out and then I can see that every element changes its sign. Minus of 0. Since I took a minus n out, 2 becomes minus 2, 3 becomes minus 3 because I have the minus n out. So minus 2 becomes 2, 0 becomes 0 itself, minus 3 becomes 3 because I have the minus n out, which shows that it is minus c. So therefore, c transpose is minus c and hence we say c is q symmetric. So we found a symmetric matrix here. Here, where is it? Okay, we found a symmetric matrix called B. And we found a skew symmetric matrix, which is called C. So that's my B matrix, and this is my C matrix. B is symmetric, and C is Q symmetric. And if you add them up, I'm supposed to get A. That's what we proved earlier, but we are going to check it. Now, B plus C, I copy what is my B from earlier step, and I also copy my C from the earlier question. So I have got A and, I'm sorry, B and C copied. Now, if you add them up, can keep half outside and do the addition and take half inside you will see that you will get your a back which is not necessary to do because we know that half of a plus a transpose plus half b is half of a plus a transpose c is half of a minus a transpose a transpose and minus a transpose will cancel half a plus half a gives me a obviously so i'm going to keep two questions for homework you need to take your time and do it carefully copy down the question first Pause the video, copy down the question. We have got, uh, you need to copy them down. We have got some two marks kind of questions now. 
if a and b are skew symmetric matrices of the same order then prove that ab minus ba is skew symmetric if a and b are skew symmetric prove that ab minus ba is skew symmetric so that's our question here So, what I am going to do here is, if A is skewed symmetric, then A transpose will be minus A. If B is skewed symmetric, B transpose will be minus B. So, A transpose is minus A because they said it is skewed symmetric. B transpose is minus B because they said B is also skewed symmetric. What I have to prove is AB minus BA is skewed symmetric. If, a, if I want to prove that AB minus BA is Q symmetric, I should take the whole transpose of AB minus BA and that should finally give me negative of the original. So, let us try that. AB minus BA, that is what I need to prove as Q symmetric. So, I am trying to take its whole transpose, AB minus BA, the whole transpose. The first thing is transpose is distributive over addition and subtraction. So, I will get it as AB the whole transpose minus BA the whole transpose. Now, if this is again distributive. So, AB the whole transpose will be B transpose A transpose. That is a property. It is not distributive. It gets reversed. AB the whole transpose is B transpose into A transpose minus BA the whole transpose will be A transpose into B transpose. Now, B transpose will be replaced by minus B a transpose will be replaced by minus A in both the places. So, let us see what happens then. So, I have got uh, B, B transpose replaced by minus B, A transpose replaced by minus A. A transpose is minus A, B transpose is minus B. So, that is minus into minus is plus, here also minus into minus is plus. So, what I get is B A minus A B, which I can take a minus and out and make it A B minus B A. So, I get minus, so when I take the minus n out, B A minus A B became minus of A B minus B A. So, A B minus B A, the whole transpose became minus of A B minus B A. So, if the transpose, when I take the transpose, if I get negative of the original, then it is called skew symmetric. So, A B minus B A is skew symmetric. Um, you need to write it down, redo it and practice it. We have another question similar to this. Show that B transpose AB is symmetric or skew symmetric according as A is symmetric or skew symmetric. This is a conditional one. What they are saying is that if A is symmetric, this turns out to be symmetric and if A is skew symmetric, this turns out to be skew symmetric. So, I need to prove that B transpose AB is symmetric if A is symmetric and B transpose AB is skew symmetric if A is skew symmetric. Read the question, try to understand the meaning again. I need to prove that A, B transpose AB is symmetric or skew symmetric according as your A is symmetric or skew symmetric. So, I am going to start with my B transpose AB and find what is its whole transpose going to be. If it remains the same, it is symmetric. If it becomes negative of the original, it is skew symmetric. So, let me start with that. B transpose AB the whole transpose. B transpose AB the whole transpose. I am stuck with that because transpose rule works only for two matrices. I got three of them. So, what I did is I grouped A, B together. So, I am going to read now this as P into Q the whole transpose. P into Q the whole transpose will be Q transpose into P transpose. P into Q the whole transpose, P into Q the whole transpose will be Q transpose into uh, P transpose, Q transpose into P transpose. So, I am going to do that property. So, when I do it, it reverses its order. So, we know that it is going to be A, B the whole transpose into B transpose the whole transpose. P into Q the whole transpose is Q transpose into P transpose. The order gets reversed. Now, when I try to simplify this further, what is A, B the whole transpose by itself, which is B transpose into 
A transpose. That's A B the whole transpose. And what happens to B transpose the whole transpose? That's B. I wrote B transpose the whole transpose as B. That's equation number one. I'm leaving it there. I'm now I'm going to make this assumption because I have got two possibilities. A can be symmetric or A can be skew symmetric. Assume that A is symmetric first. If A is symmetric, A transpose will be A. So I'm going to copy this equation number one and make A transpose as A. So I'll say equation number one becomes B transpose A B the whole transpose is equal to B transpose into the, on the right side I have B transpose A transpose into B B transpose into A transpose into B. But I know A transpose is A because I am assuming the A as symmetric. So B transpose into instead of A transpose I write A into B. Uh, that is B transpose AB. That's same as my question. So if I get the same thing back, I say that is symmetric. The next possibility is if A is skew symmetric. If A is skew symmetric, A transpose is negative A. So I'll start with equation number one again. But when I write the equation number one, this is my equation number one B transpose AB the whole transpose, basically B transpose into A transpose into B. But when I copied it, I copied the left hand side exactly the same, but on the right side B transpose I copy. Now A transpose is same as negative A, I put negative A there and B I copy it. So this minus sign can come in front, so minus of B transpose AB. And if I get the same thing with the minus sign out, then it's called skew symmetric. So B transpose AB is skew symmetric. Um, you have a question for homework and all the questions what I discussed you need to pause in between write practice it and then do the homework that's when you are benefited and revisit the video after one or two days and practice it again all the old videos you need to go back and watch again and practice it you need to be more uh, sincere now that we are facing a different situation altogether now. So spend more time watching these videos, redoing and practicing.